It is God. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. Who has anointed me? Yeah, Lord. To preach. Yeah. Amen. Good tidings yeah. to me. Yeah. God has sent me. Yeah, Lord. To bind up the brokenhearted. Yeah. To preach liberty to yeah. the captives. Amen. And the opening Hallelujah. of the prison to those who are bound. Yeah. Uh, for some of us, that means to open our mind. Hallelujah. While we are yet physically free, some of us are bound up yeah. in prison of the mind. Yes. God yeah. has given us his truth and he told us that the truth Hallelujah. will make us free. Not just yeah. set us free, it's going to make you free. Yeah, Lord. Uh, that way when you know the truth, see truth don't change. All right, now. And once you know the truth, nobody can put you back yeah, now. in the bondage yeah, that truth releases you from. God has been good to us. Hallelujah. And better than we can be to ourselves. We want to say welcome to those who are visiting guests, friends here at the West Side Church of Christ, where we believe in being soul seekers and soul winners, and soul keepers for Jesus Christ. Amen. Want to say welcome, and we pray uh, that you will be able to receive with meekness the engrafted word, the written word. As it is able yeah, Lord. to save your soul. Uh, philosophy ain't going to save you. Come on. Uh, the scientific method ain't going to save you. Yeah. Uh, your belief in the Big Bang theory and theories right. in general will, yeah. not, will not save you. But if you believe the holy words which are written and become obedient thereby, uh, that you can hang your very soul on. Right now. It will save you. And sometimes after after that, after you get saved, after God's been even better to you than you can be to yourself, you know, stuff happens. Yeah, stuff happens. And uh, you, you might end up uh, being in a physical situation, even a spiritual one. But, but every now and then, God give you that certain blessing to where you have to recognize how good you've been. Hallelujah. Uh, Y'all don't see me. I'm talking about that person that knows what it's like uh, to be on their back, either physically or maybe just in your whatever yeah. situation where there is nothing you can do. Come on now. Praise the name of Jesus. Some of y'all know the story. Come I know uh, what it's like to live three and a half months and have to have somebody wait on you. All right, hand now. And foot. I, I know what that's I'm like, but saying. Uh, but when God raised you up. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Because you live on something. Hallelujah. I want to thank God this morning. He gave us some gifts. He gave us some saints yeah. that have been sick and they're here this morning. Yeah. Thank God for that. Let us give praises yeah. to the Most High for how good he has been to us. Send me a text talking about is it okay if I do one? Man, you Thank better you, up here and do, do what now. God has yeah. put in your spirit to do. Uh, as our minister of music, we want to thank God for bringing him back to us and because I believe that the work that God has set apart for him to do, that he is song leading, that God has blessed him to yeah, do, Lord. and he has certainly yeah, put Lord. it in his veins, as is some other of us. The work that you are doing, you do it because it's in your veins. You have had many trials, you have had a whole lot of problems, you have had a whole lot of opposition, you have had to deal with us folks, and you still do it, it must be in now. your life. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to thank all those that were here uh, for, for, for Brother Dems leading us in song and then uh, the prayer, the scripture reading, everything that came uh, before that. We want to thank that uh, God uh, for depositing uh, a spirit and mindset in our brothers to work. We want to thank all the gentlemen, those that were able. I, I see the boat talk Come on now. Uh, around this church uh, today. Praise the name of Jesus. Just to do a little happy one, something to do in unity. And uh, for those of you that don't know, every first Sunday, what we gonna step in the building and just creating a spirit uh, of unity, just to do something uh, together with one accord. That's just one of the little small things right, we can do. Now. So if you're able, if you're willing to join us, it's not mandatory. It's just something we want to do, uh, have a little fun uh, with each other. So we want to thank those who are able and uh, those who are not. We'll see you on the next go round. And I heard somewhere that the sisters gonna be doing a little something, something. 
surface and it's only surface deep then is it really unity All right, yeah. uh, nah it ain't it ain't according to the text we gonna study here on this morning just as we did on last week we talked about matthew 18 15 through 20. we're talking about the spirit of agreement we're talking about keeping it 100 uh, with god keeping it 100 means uh that we are to be truthful we are to be who we are uh in the lord jesus yeah. christ 100 yeah. percent uh, not smiling then frowning, yeah, no, uh, right. not shaking hands and then stabbing in the back. No, we got to keep it and be for real, for yeah, real, no, because right. God knows the real you. Yeah. If you're going to keep it 100 with God, then guess what? You got to keep it 100 with those who the Holy Spirit dwells. That's yeah, your no, brother, right. that's your sister. Yeah, no, you got to be for real, for real. So on this morning, if the Lord uh, bless my soul, I'm going to do keeping it 100 Part two. Part two. Matthew, fifth chapter. Beginning at verse 21. If you would and could, please stand to your feet. And we do this just honoring the holy words of God as is written by our brother Matthew through the Holy Spirit. Those who have it can say amen. amen. If you are ready to read, you might say, bless the Lord, bless the word. I'm going to be reading, it's going to be a little different, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Uh, I did the study and I believe this will make it even clearer for some of those that struggle with the KJV, uh, but the meaning is the same. The Bible says, you have heard that your ancestors were told you must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are even angry with someone, yeah, Lord. you are subject to judgment if you call someone an idiot. Mm. You are in danger of being brought before the court, and if you curse someone, yeah, Lord. you are in danger of the fires of hell. So if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple, and you suddenly remember that someone has something against yeah, you. Lord. Leave your sacrifice yeah, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. there at the altar. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Go and be reconciled to that person. Yeah. Then come and offer your sacrifice Hallelujah. to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. When you are on the way to court with your adversary, settle your differences quickly. Otherwise, your accuser may hand you over to the judge who will hand you over to the officer and you will be thrown into prison. Amen. And if that happens, yeah. you surely won't be free again until you have paid the last penny. Yeah. Uh, you may be seated. in the presence of the Lord as I allow the Holy Spirit to work with me on keeping it 100, keeping it 100, being for real, being honest, being uh, straight up yeah, Lord. with God. Yeah. Not for the sake of people, uh, not to be seen of man, but 
whatever service you are rendering, uh, you are doing it essentially because uh, it's in your bank. Well, it's, well, it's real. Yeah, it's, Lord. It's something you would do uh, even if nobody was around. Yeah. It's a right. sense yeah, of Lord. integrity. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the army values is integrity. What you do when nobody is yeah. looking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You are keeping yeah. it straight up and down uh, with God. God knows all things. Uh, it has been said we can fool uh, some of the people some of the time. Yeah. But you can't fool God none of the time. Yeah. Uh, some of us have got so good at it that you can fool all the people all the time. Uh -huh. uh, some of us that good, praise uh -oh. the name of Jesus. Come on now. But you can't fool God. Amen. Not name time. Y'all yeah. don't care how good we get because the Bible says, even from the word of God, that it is a discerner of the yeah. thoughts, the intents of the heart. Yeah, Hebrews Lord. chapter 4 and verse number 12. And God himself knows the thought before it becomes a thought. You ain't got no choice but to keep it 100 with God. Yeah. But God wants you not only to keep it 100 with him because you ain't got no choice. He knows your thoughts. But he knows when you're trying to put on a front yeah. for mankind. Amen. And uh that won't work with God. Yeah. Uh, you can't present yourself to God as pure. Uh -huh. If you have not kept it 100 with your fellow man who is among you. The scripture says that in one place like this, how can you profess to love God who you ain't seen? Yeah. All right now. And hate your brother who you see. All the time. How, how can you do this? Your brother, you yeah. see your brother, you lay hands on, but you gotta have faith. You gotta understand that there is a God. God is saying, if you say you love me, you show your love to me by how you treat one another. Yeah. Satan yeah. would have us fooled as to think we are closer to God. Yeah. Watch this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> we are closer to God. Regardless of how we deal with one another, uh -huh. you must deal with one another on God's terms. Yeah. The way God tells us to deal with each other. Uh -huh. And I'm going to present that here on, on, on this morning. I want us to know first and foremost uh, that God deals with us on either side of this thing. Come on now. Be it the one that offended. Uh, or the one that is the victim. Yeah. It doesn't matter what side of the fence you are on. Yeah. God's way is for reconciling. Reconciliation must take place. Either you have done wrong and you remember and you ought to go or either you have been done wrong and you ought to go. In every case, God has covered this thing going and coming so when things explode and get out of hand, really if we don't need to look no further than ourselves. We need to handle our business to, because to keep it 100 with God is to keep it real with each other. Let me give you some backdrop. Let me give you some backdrop before we get deep in this. We don't, we don't teach this morning. Y'all all right? Y'all want to understand. Let's understand this text. Uh, before we make speculation, we have to be careful about approaching a text with presuppositions. That that is believing we already know what it means before we find out what the Come Spirit says. It is what it is. Yeah. We have to approach yeah. the text, let the text shape our mind, then trying to make the scriptures fit what's already all right, in. Y'all yeah. all right? Yeah, yeah Lord. <laughs> so in the text. In the context that he's speaking of, we know Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 is popular for the Sermon on the Mount. Uh -huh. And he gets up there on this mountain and he starts to preach uh, to those that are following him. He gives all of the different B attitudes as we call it. And then by the time you get to verse 21, he starts to deal with teaching that they had already received. Jesus makes six 
different statements. Six different times will Jesus say, you have heard it said. Yeah. But then he will follow it with, but I say yeah, Lord. unto you. And this is the first of that situation. Because in verse 21, he says, you have heard it said. But in the very next verse, he comes back and say, but I say yeah. unto you. To put this in perspective, you must understand why Jesus has come. Jesus said, don't think that I have come to destroy the law. Right. He said, I didn't come to destroy it. I came to fulfill it. Yeah, He's no, told them in one passage of scripture, surely not one jot or one tittle shall pass from the law till all be fulfilled. The word tittle stands for a Hebrew letter, which is the yod, Y-O-D. It's the smallest Hebrew letter in existence. Jesus is saying from the capital letter to the lowercase letter, from A to Z, it's all happen none of it's gonna pass away all of it shall be fulfilled and then he deals with the interpretation thereof we have to be careful of approaching what God says and putting what we want it to mean in the text notice it's important that Jesus said you have heard yeah. it said thou shall not kill or Murder, as is the literal interpretation. They had in that day and time, just like we have today, those who study scripture or those who form opinion about scripture and then teach folk what they believe God meant yeah, when he said what he said. Yeah. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious teachers of the day, when it came to the commandment of thou shalt not kill, they simply taught that if you do just that, if you take a life, uh, then you are wrong. Jesus says to them, while they have taught you that, while they use the word of God to teach you that, Jesus is the chief interpreter of the law. Meaning that whatever Christ says it means, it sure enough means. Yeah, no, it doesn't right. matter what they had learned over the hundreds of years. Yeah, it no, doesn't right. matter what uh, great, great granddaddy told them. Jesus said this thing goes deeper than what you've been told. Jesus is saying you heard it said that you should not murder. But I say unto you, if you even thinking wrong. All right, now. Yeah. Come on. And if you even got a problem with somebody, yeah. Jesus is telling you before you even get to the point where you go murder someone, it starts in the heart. You first got to have yeah. a problem All with right them. Now. And Jesus then equates the law. He equates killing somebody with having a problem without a cause. Y'all in the text? <clears throat> Verse 22, he says, but I say unto you yeah. that whoever is angry uh -huh. with his brother without cause. See, you got to have a cause. All right, now. And the only way you can have a just cause is that there must be a standard by which you say, I got a problem with you. Y'all come closer. How many of y'all know we all got different personal standards yeah, Lord. to determine whether or not you have done a person right or wrong. We all have different opinions on how something ought to be done. Amen. One person raises their children a different way yeah. from the next house. Yeah, Lord. And one person may consider it uh, a good thing to pull out the chair for, they may be considered that chivalry. Then some, uh, some, somebody else might have been taught for, for her to be more independent. Well, who is right and who is wrong? Yeah, no. That's what we call culture, that's learned behavior. But Jesus is speaking on a greater level 
If you're going to determine whether or not you ought to be angry, it's going to have to be by a universal standard. Because otherwise, it's in subjection to yourself. Otherwise, whatever you say you got a problem with, you get to have a problem with. But Jesus says, no, not so. You got to have a just cause if you're going to be angry with your brother or your sister. Well, I need a standard. What is the standard? The standard has to be what he is dealing with. He is dealing with the word of God. See, they heard it say, but now the chief interpreter is with them. Yeah. And he's saying, even greater and deeper than that, I say unto you, yeah. if you are upset, you are angry, and you, I didn't say don't be upset, yeah. but when you're upset, you better have a standard by which you got a problem. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. Because if you don't have a standard that can be established as having the issue, then you really ain't got it. All no right case. Y'all ain't here? Right. Yeah, it's kind of like this. There are things that exist in our law of the land that we should, we think should be against the law. There are other things that exist in the law that we don't think should be against yeah, the law. Yeah. How many of y'all know that by common law, whether a person gets married or not in the state of Florida, after seven years of what we call shacking up, the state will consider you married. All right now. Now we might say by our standard, by our law, which would be right because we're looking at the standard of God, that it wasn't right in the first place yeah, and that Lord. there is never a marriage that has taken place in that. Yeah. We can say that by God's law. Yeah. But then another person by their own standard can say something else. Well, what's going to determine whether or not you got a just cause? Yeah. Well, in the court of law, the law determines that. Right but when now. you get to God's house, God's law determines whether or not you got a cause yeah. for even having a problem against your brother and your sister. We got to talk about this because if we are to be unified, we need one law. And one law must be in all the hearts, the minds. And when one law rules the heart and the mind, when we all let the word of Christ dwell in all of us richly, the things that we do to one another, we can have a just cause or eliminate the cause if we have the same right standard. Now. Yeah, Lord. Let me show you what, 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 what this means is, Remember on last week we talked about the fact that sometimes you gotta you gotta come to somebody. You you gotta take a witness with you. You you gotta you gotta bring somebody. See the problem with that, if you don't use the Bible as your standard, see the problem with that is when I come to you and I'm not using the scriptures yeah. as my standard. I, I'm using uh, some cultural law. Maybe even in some sense some civil law. That is lower than God's standard. Yeah. If I'm using that, the problem is going to come in because we're dealing with a spiritual matter. We're dealing with a spiritual relationship. So my relationship with my brother and my sister has to be validated and has to be cleaned by the word of God. Take for instance, I can have a problem with you, but my problem can simply be, <clears throat> my problem can simply be my own standard. Watch this. What if I was so small-minded as to have a problem and take it personal on this morning that whoever did it wear a bow tie? Come on. Come on. Come on. Nah, I'm foolish. Come on now. How, 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 how immature. Yeah. How yeah, below this standard. Because yeah, that, that ain't no scriptural yeah. requirement. That ain't nothing. You either did or you didn't. All right now. But if, if I were to say, brother, I got a fault. I don't like that you didn't do this. 
I can, I can make up whatever I can say. I can say stuff like, see, 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 you're against the unity. Yeah. Come on now. Foolish, right? Foolish. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I got to illustrate how Satan works now. You know you got some. If you ain't have, maybe you should have heard. I told you that we got a sister you could have bought one from. Praise the name of God. You see how foolish this sound? But what Satan get us caught up on is our own law, our own feelings, and how we feel. And if we want to take that, put that law upon each other, and here he is sitting back laughing and kiki and smiling yeah. at our disunity and saying if they would just use the standard, yeah, they wouldn't be no problem. Yeah. That's foolishness to have a problem with something like that. Yeah, Lord. But see, that's 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 our standard. But so Jesus, this is what he's doing. In verse 21, this is why he deals with the interpretation of the law. He says, You have heard it said. Well, Jesus, why did they say it? They said it because they read the Ten Commandment law that said, Thou shalt not kill. And they said, if you take a life, now you in sin. Jesus said, no, the spirit of the law, the intent of that was that you should not even get angry and not have a cause. Let's go a little deeper. Watch this. Because if you got a cause, watch this. If you got a cause, it is no longer murder. Well, well. Don't, don't, don't miss this point. In your scripture, murder is condemned. In that Old Testament, Jesus lived and died under the law. I don't have time to deal with that. But when he deals with this, killing and dying of a cause is a lie. Murder is the sin. If you are angry without a cause, it's a problem. But if you got a cause, a scriptural cause is what will happen. They, they were saying, oh, hey, you stole my mule. Yeah, now. The law say that you got to restore me fourfold. Right. Somebody, yeah, that's your mule. Right. But you ain't getting it back. Uh-huh. Then they would take a brother or a witness two or three and say, listen, listen, listen. He stole my mule. They would go to him and say, say, did you steal you? That's his you, but he ain't getting it back. Why he ain't getting it back? Because I, don't, I just don't too much care. He got plenty. I, I'm struggling over here. And is it too much that I have one? He got 10 more. That ain't the issue. And, and yeah, we do Lord. that kind of thing. That's why I use that. Yeah, but, but he got 10 more. All I got is one. All I took is the one. It didn't matter. The fact was now it's established that you have disobeyed the law. And if they can establish, now this is the law. Somebody might have thought it was okay. Hey, man, you got 10. That's all good. Somebody may say, why don't you go and shit? But see, you are not the standard. All right now. Yeah, Lord. You think and may say that's okay. But what matter is what the word said is supposed to happen. Now watch this. Once they establish that some wrong has been done by the law and it's established, yes, you did it. They're gonna deliver you up to one in that day and time and depending on the matter, that's not a congregational matter at that day and time. They dealing with it in their tribe. So they would go, then go to the elders of the tribe. And once it's established, do you not know? If you don't restore, they killed them right there. All right now. You die. But listen, they are not dying on the standard man said. We are dying on the standard God said. Let yeah. me come closer. Let me see if I can illustrate this for those that may understand it this way. When you want to be saved, when you want to awaken from the death of sin, the death of sin, which is death. When you are baptized, you have better be obeying the word of God. You heard the word, you have believed it, you have repented of your sins, you have confessed, and you have been baptized. God says you are saved. How and why do we say that salvation? Because it's in him. That's the law. But what if I say I'm saved? 
but I did not do it by the standard of the law. In essence, you have what is called no salvation yeah. at all. You are not. So therefore, when you die physically, you will be eternally separated from God, which is the second death. And that means God himself just gave you death for your disobedience to the standard. Are y'all following that? Right now. Just, okay, okay, now watch this. Jesus said, you heard it said, you heard it said, but I say. So he's dealing with a better understanding of what you won't even think to hurt your brother or sister. You won't even think to murder them. You won't even think to do them harm if you first understand how to have a righteous anger. What you mean a righteous anger? Yeah. I mean the anger that you got has got to be established by the law. When Jesus walked into the temple and saw that they made merchandise out of his temple, they were robbing people of their money, they were saying this is a good sacrifice, and they were weighing it in the bad balances and scales were off and they were charging people more money than they ought to be charged for the sacrifice. Tell me Jesus didn't make his own weapon. Start with it, folks, until y'all got to get out of here because they were breaking. Yeah, the, was he upset? Yes, he was upset. Why was he upset? He had a reason. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't just because of how he felt. We get mad over, at each other. We got no reason. We just get in one more time. Must say. Yeah. That's, that's, that's immaturity and that's foolish by God. Now, now watch this. He says, But I say unto you, whosoever is angered with, at, with his brother, or without a cause, shall be in danger of judgment. And now this rekah that you see in here in that food, rekah was the Aramaic word for calling somebody an empty headed person. Uh, W. Come on. Uh, you ain't intelligent. You ain't got no brains. Um, we have better exercise, better judgment than that. Yeah, Lord. Better, better understanding. Now that's what the word meant. It meant to have a uh, call someone an empty-headed person. Now, here's where we get to the meat of this. Watch this. Verse 23 says, Therefore, Already, you got to understand everything I just told you if you're going to get what happens after this therefore. This is why it's necessary we teach and give background. Otherwise, you will leave here just like those who heard it said yeah. rather than got the but I say unto you part. You don't hear what I say? Yeah. Remember, they already knew the law. They heard it said. They heard an interpretation. But now the chief interpreter, Jesus, said, this is what that meant. He's going to say that six times. Watch this. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you. Come on now. He can't have the bow tie problem against you. Come on now. He ain't, that's not the standard. Yeah, Lord. That's immature. That's his personal issue. That ain't going God is not going to convict him or her on those little things you got. When he, you bring a cause, it has to be that something there has to mean a just cause. So before, in order for you to understand remembering that he has an art, you must know how important an art is. An art don't mean anything. It, I know it don't mean anything because of what he said in the verses before that. The standard is set. The standard is the word of God. And if you got something against him, that something must be by the standard of the law. Why? Well, it only makes sense. Because if it's by the law, guess what you can do? You can prove your problem. Because if the problem is written, you can prove it. Now, let me give you some imagery. This is to be done of them. Jesus said, but I say. He ain't even simply talking about when the church comes. Look, watch your text. 
He is interpreting the law that they have right there and then. He says, you heard it said, but I say. He's talking about right there, right now, this is the case. Now don't get me wrong. The same thing spills over into your new covenant. Amen. Your new testament church. Because we understand what? We understand that we offer sacrifice. What do you offer, Brother Taylor? You offer the sacrifice of praise unto your lips. You offer the labor that God has given you. You offer yourself. God lives in you. He is the Holy Spirit. He owns you. And whatever you do, that it, it, it ought to belong to God. Now, now, now watch this. Before you offer your gift, before you even think about opening your mouth to sing, Come on. go in your pocket to give, visit the city, Come on. work on the Lord's table, yeah. read the text, pray, whatever you getting ready to do. Before you do that, yeah, Lord. you have to keep it 100. Yeah, Lord. This is the imagery. The Jews had to buy a sacrifice. Some of them were traveling, y'all. They would travel like the day of Pentecost. They travel, they come in there, and, and when they come from far, they didn't have the animals with them. So what they would do is they would take, they would have money. They get to the temple and they would buy a proper sacrifice. And when they bought the sacrifice, they don't offer it. The only tribe that can offer the sacrifice is who? Levi. Levi. Yeah. So they buy the sacrifice. They go to the temple and there's a rail there. There's a separation from where the children of Israel can be and where the priest can be. The priest can be on the inner court. The children of Israel can be on the court outside of that. Then there was another court outside of that for the Gentiles. Yeah. But the priest can only be in this area. Only they were allowed in this area. The people are bringing their sacrifices to the temple. Watch this. So when they bring their sacrifice, they're in a line. Somebody gave their sacrifice. Next. Somebody gave their sacrifice. Next. And while you are coming to offer your sacrifice, you remember. All right now. You remember. Yeah, Lord. I call Brother Kadil Hall a fool. Come on now. I had a problem with so and so, but I, instead of going to so and so, went to gossip so. Come on now. And told gossip so. Come on now. What so and so did to me, and so and so don't even know. Come on now. That's that's a that's a problem because we know what Matthew 18 say. I have just learned that the scriptures meant something that Mr. or Mrs. So and So taught, but I already done labeled what they taught as false. I've slandered their name already, but I'm about to offer Come my on praise. Now. Come on. I'm about to offer my gift. I'm, I'm about to, to present some, something to God mm -hmm. who knows that by his standard, mm -hmm. I have broken yeah, not the law of the person. I have broken his law. Yeah, Lord. They, you, you know I'm getting ready to give this sacrifice for atonement of wrong. I want God, watch this, I want God to accept it because when God accepts your sacrifice, you know that he has forgiven you of all your wrong. But before God say, before you expect to give me anything, before you give me a sacrifice, before me and you can make reconciliation, you must first yeah. do this. 
He's saying what? He's saying, when you remember, leave. Leave your gift. You in line waiting to, to give it. And this pop in your head. What we supposed to do is put the sacrifice down. Yeah, Lord. Go to the person and say, look at him. I did something wrong by God's word. I need to get this thing right with you. Because by God's standard, I have wronged you. How many of you know you ain't got to say God curses me? You you curse me, and guess what? You just curse God. You don't believe me? Watch how consistent the scriptures is. Jesus said to them, When you, I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was hungry, you gave me eat. When I was homeless, you gave me shelter. They say, Who, who, when we saw that, Jesus? He said, If you did it to my. That means it's going to go away. If you are doing your brother and your sister wrong, if you are doing them less than the standard of the law, God said you're doing it unto me. Now watch this contradiction. How you going to offer praise to the God that dwells in the one that you did wrong, then come to the temple, want to offer it to God, want God to accept it, and you just disrespected somebody he died for. You can't do it. God say that's faith. God don't want your faith. God say, God, you got to keep it 100. Yeah, Lord. Because yeah, I already Lord. know. I know the thoughts, the intents of the heart. Yeah, Lord. He say, go and first yeah. be reconciled. God wants reconciliation in everything we are doing. Y'all remember Matthew 18, 20. Where two or three are gathered together in my name. God can't be in the midst of your sacrifice. God cannot accept your sacrifice. When you know there is a reason that somebody has an issue. I'm not talking about your personal stuff. I'm talking about scripturally valid problems. And when you have a just cause, that's what a scripturally valid issue is. When you have a just cause, God is not going to accept your sacrifice. Right now. What does that mean? If God were to put up some stats right mm, now. Come on, on that, now. On that screen up there. God just divinely shined the light in here. Boom. And he said, out of 300 people in here. Since a year ago, this is how many been truly worshiped. Come on now. Come on. You say, but well, Lord, I've been here every Sunday. Come on now. I, I've been here for years. I ain't missed a Sunday. Yeah, Lord. And that's the moment when you realize this is the difference between coming to church and going to worship. It's a difference between coming to church and worshiping yeah, God. Yeah, if you Lord. ain't got your mind right, you just here. Yeah. You ain't did nothing for Christ. Yeah. He ain't accepting none of that stuff. It's gibberish. It won't be till you get it right down here on the horizontal level that you can get it right on the vertical and then you can have a proper worship. Now, 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 now see, God knows the stats. Yeah, Lord. You know, and maybe you know yourself. You, you already know the stat. That, that's, that's, for, that's for us to figure out. This is what Jesus knocked on your door right now and say, uh-huh. Uh-huh. That situation right there. That. If you, you, if you even got a situation, you had better evaluate it carefully. And not by your standard. Yeah, Lord. Because it's got to be a just call. If it ain't a just cause, a scriptural thing that you can validate, you shouldn't have no issue. All right, now. Satan get us all caught up in what problems we personally have. We he get us focused in on what we want to see versus what he commands us to see. 
Y'all ain't no question. Scripturally, you know, one of the things we have to deal with, and, and I have to remember to, 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 to I, I try to be careful with, with, with the illustrations I give. Um, it used to be that, 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 that some folk think that, um, oh, he talking about that. Listen, listen. I told you last week, the Bible is a discernment. Yeah, Lord. The thoughts and the intentions of the heart. One of the things we got to be careful with in the body of Christ is, is this visitation thing. We have got to be careful because all of us yeah. have the obligation yeah. to visit Amen. the sick yeah. Yeah. because a ministry is established to they don't do your work for you. Come on here, preacher. God and say West Side is accounted for because three, four, or ten of us went and visit and they got God is looking for you. Yeah. Come on and then now. And another thing, Satan get us caught up in, you might have done some visitation. Yeah. But we want you to do these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you didn't visit these Come on four, now. Come on. you ain't done. It. Come on now. That ain't nobody. Right now. But see, yeah, how many of us know that when we, we might be visiting sick family, sick friends, whomever you visit, Jesus said, if you've done it unto my brethren, you have done it unto me. Yeah. Well, here goes Satan. He going to whisper in your ear and say, down. see, you, you visited everybody on the sheep. Why they can't do it. Come on now. What you did. Come on now. You visited everybody. You gave a hundred dollars a week. Why they can't. Come on now. Give. Y'all ain't here? Come on. Oh, this Come is on good now. because it ain't no way, man. Come this on. is the first time I felt that it was good because <laughs> it ain't. Yeah. Satan saying to you, yeah, you uh you brought your can good for the ministry. Come on now. By the end, bring that can good. Come on now. Know they got some. Come on. And while Satan is dealing with you and making you stick your chest out about your visitation and your attendance and brother's training and, 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 and what it is you do, let me remind you that we are saved by grace and not by works, lest any man should boast. Yeah. God know your ability. You had better go as far as God let you go. Yeah. And anybody that ain't there, you pray that they catch up. All but right I want to let you know that in the end, God, God will keep it 100 with all of us. What you saying? Keep it 100, wash his hands, the parable. He said the man went out. <clears throat> Saw some people that was idle, they were idle, they were idle, they weren't working. He said, come into my vineyard. I, I want you to work. And, and um, at the end of the day, they're going to work about 11 hours. At the end of the day, uh, I'm going to give you uh, what we agreed on. They agreed, let's say it was 100 pence. We agree on 100 pence. We agree at the end of the day, you're going to get, let's do this today, so you're going to get $100. Okay, watch this. And then they start working. They working hard in the vineyard. They doing what yeah, they supposed to do. They, they, they getting it in, getting it in. Then he go back out. He finds some other people in this noon day. And that noon day, we got a custom, y'all. I'm, I'm going to be quiet. Right we got now. Back to this. Thank you, brother. Douglas been coming here for at least 11 months, almost a year. I thought he was a brother. It just wasn't. Douglas is ready to become a, be added to the body. Amen. Douglas, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? I do. With this confession, it brought death to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to you, who will bring life everlasting. Live faithful unto death, and God will give you a life, crown of life, that would never fade away. Best decision you ever made in your life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The parable says, at noon.
day. He goes back out and he sees some other folk and he say, why y'all ain't working? Come on. Y'all come on into my video. I want you to work. And then they agree for $100 too. Now wait a minute. Come on. You got some folk that's been working since early in the morning. These just started. Eight or six more hours of work yeah. time. Yeah, but they're working and they agree with the one who, watch this, has the job, has the money, has the resources to give it as he yeah. pleases. Yeah, so they go into the big yard, they start working. Then he go back out. Ain't but an hour left yeah. of yeah. work day. All right now. He say, why well, y'all ain't working? Nobody picked us up. He said, come on over here yeah. and work. Yeah. And, and you know what is really even more interesting I didn't see until about a week ago. When you read that parable, the ones that, watch this, the ones that started working first, come on didn't now. get paid first. What that mean? What that mean? When you read the text, the ones that started working first, the reason they had issue yeah. with what the ones that started working later got yeah. is because they saw what the ones that came later were getting paid. That being the ones that came later were getting paid first and they were getting the same thing that the ones that had been working since the morning time had agreed on. Yeah. Then he has to say to them, wait a minute, me and you, even though you started in the morning, we agreed to work all day for this. Yeah. Don't get mad at yeah. Jesus because he agreed to save all of us by the same standard. And some of us got varying abilities on what it is we can do. All we right had better now. stop having a problem with Jesus ain't got no problem. Woo! Come on now. If Jesus ain't got a problem, what yeah, you got with Lord. Tell me who's more righteous. If, if Jesus ain't got no issue with what we look like. And, and if Jesus uh, ain't got no problem and you have one, uh, what does that say about how Satan is dealing with you? Right now. Come on. Come on. You can't be more righteous. Come on now. Than Christ. Yes, Lord. We had better let the scripture. Be our standard. So as, as, I, as I prepare to close, while you're trying to keep it 100 with everybody else, remember your first standard. Keep it 100 with God.